tanks need to be designed, tested and deployed carefully. Even with the pressures of war taken into account, the process should be methodical to ensure that mechanically reliable vehicles with good fighting characteristics and survivability actually reach the front line. By 1945, the United Kingdom had suffered economically and industrially, not only with the expenses of the war, but also the aerial bombing of cities and submarine warfare against its convoys. This, combined with the need to produce a large number of tanks to field against the Germans and their allies, had all contrived to hinder the design and production of new tanks. By 1943, there was a desire to have a good cruiser tank, well protected and fielding the excellent 17-pounder gun. In practice, the vehicle would be equivalent to the Germans' new medium tank, the Panther. This tank would become the A41 Centurion. The much-delayed project was finally ready by 1944 and passed initial domestic trials. By the time it was ready, the war in Europe was very nearly over, but the Centurion was quickly rushed to the continent in the hope the vehicle could be tried in combat against German forces. Even without seeing combat, deploying the new tank operationally in a war zone environment would provide invaluable experience, shedding light on what worked and what didn't. These lessons would help the Centurion become one of, if not the, finest tank ever built. With hundreds of variants seeing combat around the globe, from Korea and South Africa to Vietnam and the Middle East. Hello, and welcome to another Tank Encyclopedia voiced article. I'm your host, Mark, and today I will be covering part one of Operation Sentry, the first operational deployment of the British Centurion tank. If you like our videos and want to support us, please consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be used to improve future Tank Encyclopedia content. Any help would be greatly appreciated. Development The final specifications for Centurion were not set in stone until February of 1944. The tank did not even have a name by this point. It was simply known as the A41 Heavy Cruiser Tank. Because while one could remove the Navy from Britain, one could not remove Britain from its Navy, even on land. The name Centurion was even being considered for another vehicle, the A-30, although this cruiser would end up with the name Challenger. An order was placed for 20 pre-production prototypes for evaluation trials. In May, the director of the Royal Armoured Corps amended this order so that small modifications could be evaluated. This included different coaxial weapons, such as the 20mm Polson cannon, and the 7.62 Beza machine gun, and the choice of a rear-facing machine gun or turret hatch. One vehicle was even trialled with a 77mm high-velocity cannon, as used on the Comet, rather than the standard 17-pounder. By June, these trials were already bearing fruit. The rear-facing machine gun was surplus to requirements, and interfered with the operating of the 2-inch bomb thrower, used for firing smoke rounds and was dropped in favour of the rear turret hatch. The 20 tanks were to be built at the Royal Ordnance Factory at Woolwich Arsenal and in Nottingham, although some parts were made in the Royal Ordnance Factory's plants in Patricroft, Radcliffe and Ellesmere Port. As events transpired, the final four prototypes were cancelled. A 21st hull made in non-armoured steel known as the Soft Boat was to be made by AEC Limited in Southall for suspension and layout trials. Technical details. The requirement for well-sloped frontal armour meant that the vertical driver's plate on the front of the tank, so recognisable on British tanks from the Churchill to Comet, was gone. This had been kept partially to make sure a hull-mounted machine gun could be retained for the tanks, but with only a single crew member in the hull, and this single sloping front plate, this hull machine gun was finally removed. A single large front sloping plate on the A41 meant the tank bore more resemblance to the German Panther, with the exception that whilst the Panther had 80mm or more of armour on the glasses, the Centurion had just 2.25 inches, 
or 57 millimeters across the glasses and nose plate. Although not desirable, British tankers could take comfort in the fact that the Panther was as vulnerable to the Centurion at combat ranges as the Centurion was to the Panther. Production model Centurions would adopt a thicker glasses to improve protection. Suspension was in the form of six double rubber-tired bogey wheels on each side. With the return of the 20-inch or 508mm wide, 5.5-inch or 140mm pitch track supported by rollers. The 108 links for the track on each side were made from cast manganese steel and were not fitted with rubber pads. The track and suspension was also usually hidden under a 6mm thick bazooka plate, running the full length of the suspension. Each bogey was provided with a Newton-Bennett shock absorber and a coil spring and hydraulic damper. Powered by the Rolls-Royce Meteor Mark IV-A petrol engine, delivering 635 horsepower at 2,550 RPM, it had a power-to-weight ratio of 13.7 brake horsepower per tonne, Imperial, which was only a problem in terms of fuel consumption. The 120-gallon, or 545.5-litre petrol tank, was only sufficient for 90 miles, or 145 kilometres, of travel on road. This meant the A41 consumed some 1.3 gallons of petrol per mile, or 3.8 litres per kilometre. The Merritt Brown Z51 gearbox combined with girling brakes allowed for the steering of the tank under what was known as a controlled differential system. This was the preferred solution for a tank transmission, but it was decided to also try the synchro mesh self-shifting system as well. Known as the Sinclair Meadows Powerflow synchro mesh self-shifting system, this was an automatic gear change system by the Hydraulic Coupling and Engineering Company. This was an advanced and complex gearing system, which had been experimented with during the war, perhaps most famously on the TOG tank programme. It offered the enormous advantage of allowing for a smooth transition from forward to reverse motion and vice versa via a fluid flywheel clutch. Both gearboxes were seven speed designs, but the Merritt Brown offered five forward and two reverse gears, whereas the Sinclair Meadows had four and three respectively. On the A41, the Synchro Mesh self-shifting system allowed for the tank to reverse at speeds of up to 14 miles an hour or 22.5 kilometers an hour. But only one A41 was ever fitted with this system and was designated the A41S. The system was eventually abandoned after a series of minor problems and unpopular reports on it from the crews, for whom it was too different from what they were already used to. The Merritt Brown Z51 would eventually be the winning system from these trials. Domestic trials. Early domestic trials were, by all accounts, a pleasant change from many tanks during the war, where problem followed problem followed problem. The first automotive trials had actually taken place in September 1944, using that soft boat, the term for the non-armoured steel test hull. Then, the only particular problem observed was excessive tracking to one side, which caused a lot of undue brake wear. There were no fundamental problems with the design, and it immediately received a green light for production of prototypes which were to start in January 1945. Unfortunately, demands for tried and tested frontline equipment took precedence, and it wasn't until April that deliveries of Centurion started arriving. The first vehicle was delivered to the Fighting Vehicle Proving Establishment, FVPE, at Chertsey in Surrey, and immediately started a series of automotive trials. It was followed shortly thereafter by the next two vehicles, the story for all three was the same. They were deemed excellent. The initial prototypes blew through their tests, covering over 1,055 miles, or 1,698 kilometers, with 467 miles of those being off-road. Reaching a top speed of 23.7 miles per hour, this brand new 45.5 ton tank was an impressive vehicle. By May 1945, gunnery trials took place at Lulworth, and these two went very well. In fact, by this time, the only criticism levied towards the vehicle 
was that the forward ammunition bin needed some slight modifications. Considering how well trials were proceeding, and the end of the war in Europe in sight, there was a desire within the army to send Centurion overseas for evaluation by frontline soldiers, and test its metal in combat, before the trials at home had actually finished. Patience prevailed, and the domestic trials were completed prior to any being sent abroad. Although such was the eagerness of the British High Command, that immediately following the trials, a group of Centurions were packed up and shipped off to the European front. But that is a story we will cover in our next video. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe. You can find more information relating to the Centurion in the full article which is linked in the description. If you like what we're doing and want to help us continue working on these videos, please consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be allocated to improving our articles and videos for you. Until next time, keep us in your sights.